Hi, my name is uh, Michael McAlpine and I'm a GRCC student. I am in uh, Simon CO 232 class. In front of us we have a Raspberry Pi. This is the uh, Model B. I'll explain what this can do, how much it costs, and the differences between this and the Model A. So the Model B is the second revision of the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, the Model A, the first revision, has 256 megabytes of RAM, a single USB port, no Ethernet, and um, requires a uh, 2.5 watt USB mini power supply, uh, like the one we have right here. Um, these come uh, standard with most Android phones. They're pretty ubiquitous, um, relatively cheap. Um, uh, the Model B, which we have in front of us, has um, also 256 megabytes of RAM, um, two USB ports, which you can see right here, an Ethernet port, which the Model A does not have, and it requires an almost identical 3.5 watt USB mini power supply. The Model A retails for um, uh, $25, and the Model B retails for $35. So, the Model A and B both support an SD memory chip. Um, uh, this is uh, pretty standard on most cameras. Um, you can get converters from SD micro to normal SD if you have, you know, a bunch of old uh, SD micro cards or SD mini cards laying around. Um, uh, the port we have right here in front of us is a standard HDMI port. Um, uh, in the next video, I'm going to plug that port into my monitor and go through the setup of the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, like I said, we've got our Ethernet port right here, two USB ports, audio port, and an RCA video port. Um, uh, we also have this plug-in here, which is a GPIO. Um, and you can use that to add expansions onto the Raspberry Pi. Other kind of neat things include, um, you've got some power lights right here, an OK light, a power light, a link light, and a 10 megabit connection light. There's also an FDX light, which I don't know what that means. So, why would we buy one of these? What can you do with it? And what are some of the cool things it can do? Um, First off, uh, a Raspberry Pi runs a couple of different flavors of Linux, including Debian, which is what I'm going to install on it, uh, Fedora 14, Arch Linux. Um, it also runs Qton Pi, which is an SDK or a development kit, and it also runs R RISC operating system. Um, uh, like I said earlier, we will be installing Debian on this, and we will be using the Wheezy version. Um, uh, so what can I do with my Raspberry Pi? I can use it as a budget television, uh, smart television, excuse me. I can also use it as a budget television if I want to stream content through it. Um, uh, it can be used as a homebrew um, uh, voicemail system. <clears throat> uh, there's a... Uh, I, it's software called Free Switch that is being worked on for this guy. Um, it can be uh, used as a NAS device, which is network attached storage. And if you're really fancy, you can set it up as a private cloud. You can use it as an XBMC media center. You can use it as a webcam server and or baby monitor. Um, if you really want to get technical, I've seen guys that add uh, Super Nintendo controllers onto this. Um, there's a separate expansion card, and you can plug two controllers into that and use it like a Super Nintendo. Um, you can also set it up and use it in an arcade cabinet too, which is pretty cool. Um, you can use it as a proxy server, firewall, game server, um, an asterisk VoIP server, a music system, video conferencing system, Tor server, BitTorrent Seedbox, and or client. Oh, and you can also use it as a PC. Um, now I'm going to set up for my second video, so please join me for that. Hi, this is Michael McAlpine again. I've got the uh, Raspberry Pi almost set to go. Got my HDMI cable here, Ethernet, um, 
a USB port which is uh, plugged into a KVM um, uh, that's got a keyboard and mouse plugged into it and I'm not going to use the sound or the RCA port. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the installation of the Raspberry Pi image onto the um, uh, micro SD card. Then I'm going to put that in my converter here, plug that into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi, which is kind of hard to get to, um, uh, and then we'll boot it up and see if it works. Okay, that's pretty bright. I may change the background here. Uh, let's just do classic. That's pretty easy on the eyes. Um, so I've got the uh, Raspberry Pi um, image right here. Um, I've got this software down here, which is the uh, Win32 Disk Imager, which is on the Raspberry Pi site. Um, the uh, micro SD card is um, device F, and I've already got the uh, image pointed at that right there. So I'm going to write. Um, it's uh, prompting and telling me that I could corrupt my physical drives or device if I continue. Uh, I'm not worried about that memory card, so I'm going to let it do its thing. Uh, it takes about, well, it's about 6% right now, so it's going to go on for a little, wi a little bit of time. I'm going to pause the video and resume when it's done. Okay, so the uh, memory card um, uh, operating system install seems to have worked. I'm going to plug in the uh, power cable. Maybe, there we go. Um, uh, as you can see, the lights light up on here. You've got some text flashing. Uh, Linux service is starting up. Uh, things like pre preliminary key map, um, uh, swap, uh, important things. Uh, Okay, so at this point, um, I can look up information, expand the root file system, overscan, configure the keyboard, change passwords for the Pi, uh, set location, set time zone, um, uh, split the memory, which I think is the swap in this case, um, enable or disable SSH, um, uh, modify boot behavior, so we can start desktop on boot, and we can also update from here. So I'm going to set it to start the desktop on boot. Um, I've selected that and by hitting the right key on the keyboard it goes down to select. I'll hit enter and it's prompting us asking if we want to boot straight to the desktop. We will say yes. Um, and then we will finish. And we will reboot. So again, more text, um, stopping services. Uh, starting up services. Um, sorry for not uh, talking more. This isn't the most exciting thing. Uh, just waiting for services to start up. We have our mouse, um, the Raspberry and the Raspberry Pi. We have icons here. They include um, IDLE, which I don't know what that is, um, a Devon reference file, Scratch, IDLE 3, Python Games, Midori, and LX Terminal. 
In the bottom left, we have the equivalent of the Windows Start menu here. Um, I'm going to open a terminal. And in the bottom right, we have um, uh, CPU usage, shutdown, lock. Um, the bottom left, we have different uh, desktop environments. My terminal is open here, so I'm going to type in some commands. sudo apt get update. Um, double ampers space double ampersand sudo apt get upgrade we're gonna run that oh and apparently it does not like sudo maybe I'm logged in as root already which I think I am Permission denied. Let's see. I'll try super user. And I don't know the password here. So I'm going to pause the video, look that up, and I'll be right back. Okay, after some uh, thorough investigation, I figured out I had my commands typed in wrong. Um, that happens when you type with one hand. So, um,. I'm going to up back to sudo apt dash get update uh, space ampersand ampersand sudo apt da, uh, apt dash get upgrade. I'm gonna hit enter here. It's working. It's uh, checking for updates from the repositories, which probably won't be the quickest process. Um, it's hitting uh, http colon forward slash forward slash mirrordirect.raspberryan.org uh, Wheezy RPI translation English Great Britain because that's the language that's set by default since this uh, device comes out of the UK. Um, it's ignoring quite a few of the mirrors. Uh, when I tested this beforehand, I let it sit for about five minutes before I actually killed the update process. Um, but it looks like it's uh, finishing fine now. Um, it's amazing that these uh, repositories change over a couple days. Um, so right now it's reading the uh, new package list. It's at about 40-51%. It's at 99%. Alright, it's done. It's uh, building the dependency tree, reading state information, and it's prompting me that there are 11 upgrades. Um, uh, zero newly installed, zero to remove, and zero not upgraded. 9.79 kilobits worth of information. So I'm going to say yes. And it's probably kill. well, I don't know if it's kilobytes or kilobits. I think it's kilobits, actually. Um, so now it's hitting the repositories that have the proper updates. We're getting a bash update, um, uh, some files, a couple of libraries, a um, uh, new Python update, idle 3 update, more Python. Um, and we've got my cat down here who is uh, meowing at me for some reason. Hi, Neo. Um, back to uh, Raspberry Pi. Alright, it's uh, asking me to make some bash changes. I'm going to uh, leave the default. Um, we actually notice as it's doing the upgrade, um, the uh, CPU usage is definitely spiking on here. Uh, like I said earlier, it's got a 700 megahertz processor and 256 megabytes of RAM. 
um, that rivals a lot of uh, Windows XP machines circa 2002, 2003-ish. Um, hey, maybe older than that. Uh, I think my family had a uh, Windows ME computer with uh, 128 megabytes of RAM and an 800 megahertz processor. And that was in year 2000. That was purchased brand new. Um, we're still waiting. Yep, I know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, so sorry. Uh, let's look at some of the applications on the Raspberry Pi. If we go to our accessories, we've got the uh, Debian reference, a file manager, probably similar to Natalis, um, an image manager, a leaf pad, which is a text editor, um, X terminal, which is a terminal, um, a root terminal. Um, and X Archiver, which is a GK2 plus a GK can't talk G2K plus two archive manager. Under Education, we've got Scratch and Squeak. Internet, we have Dillo, Midori, Midori Private Browsing, NetSurf Web Browser. Under Programming, we have IDLE, IDLE three, Scratch and Squeak. And we've got a task manager under system tools. Under preferences, we can customize the look and feel. We've got our desktop session settings, mouse and keyboard setup, um, in case you know you're not in the United States and you buy one of these. We have monitor settings, open box configuration manager, and preferred applications. So now that the uh, Raspberry Pi is done updating, I have um, a terminal back. I'm going to close out of this, um, do a shutdown, and you guys should definitely think about purchasing one of these devices. It's pretty cool, or if you can wait a little while um, uh, and save a little bit more money, there's another one called the Gooseberry coming out that should have a 1.5 gigahertz processor and quite a bit more system RAM. I think it has at least 512 megabytes. Um, well, anyways, have a nice day, guys. Bye.